Let's install work folders on Windows Server 2016. And we're going to do that by first working on the server and then working on the client. And let's go ahead and start on add roles and features. And while the roles and features are installing, let's go ahead and explain a little bit about what work folders is. Choose next. I'm going to choose our file and storage services and choose work folders. We're also going to choose web server IIS as well. And click next, next, and install. We need IIS because we're going to be installing a self-signed certificate and then adding it to the trusted root on both the server and the client. So what work folders is, it's very similar to Dropbox or to OneDrive. However, it's a little bit more like OneDrive, and that is because when we create a sync share and someone else connects to it, they synchronize those folders to their local workstation. So we don't want them to create a sync share that's so big that they fill up their hard drive. So keep that in mind, unlike Dropbox where you can just drop the files in and out of your computer, this one keeps them fully synchronized back with the server. And that's a good thing and a bad thing. It's bad if it fills up your hard drive, but it's good if it allows you to have the files offline. So even if you're not working on the internet, you can still open and edit your files. And then when you do reconnect, it will automatically synchronize those changes back to the server. Now our installation is complete. Let's go ahead and click close. And let's go to our file and storage services and click on work folders. Let's get started by clicking to create a sync share for work folders. Click next. And we're going to choose a shared folder that we've already created called test. Now I'm going to go into Windows Explorer and just make sure that we have a test folder that is all ready to go that is shared. And we do, and we have the permissions set up for everyone for full control on the share side and the security set up for domain users to have full control. So basically anybody part of the domain can have access to this folder that we're about to create a sync share with. You may decide to create a special security group where only certain people are allowed rather than everyone. But in my case, for testing purposes, we're just going to open it right up. And we're going to choose the file share that we have here, c colon backslash test, and click next. This next part is very important because if you decide you want to add users outside of your domain, such as contractors, then you want to choose the user alias at domain. And the reason for that is because if you have two people with the same name, then you can separate them out by having a separate domain name for each one. So if you have a Tom at the internal network of your corporation, and then you have a Tom who's a contractor, well, then you can separate them out by creating two different domains. Let's go ahead and choose this uh, anyway, even though we're not going to be setting up for separate domains at this time, because it will work for internal and external. If we just choose user alias, it'll only work for internal people on our Active Directory domain. We'll click Next. We'll leave it set to Test. And we'll click Add. And let's go ahead and add that same domain users group or whatever security group you create with the users involved at that point. And we're going to want to encrypt the folders to add extra security. And if we choose the second option, it will automatically lock the screen and require a password uh, if we walk away from our computer. It'll add that to the local policy of the computer itself. Go ahead and click Next and Create. It's now complete. Go ahead and click Close. And now we're going to want to go into Tools and Internet Information Services, and we need to set up a new certificate. If you already have IIS installed prior to this and are using it, then you may have a difficult time getting this to work. So I recommend you only put this onto a server that has never had IIS on it before because of some port conflicts that could, could arise. So let's go to Server Certificates, and from there we're going to 
go to create a self-signed certificate. And we're going to want to give it a friendly name. And the name is going to be the name of the server, which is data. Let's go ahead and leave it as a personal certificate since it's not really hosting a website. And click OK. And now we're going to go to our default website. And we're going to bind this certificate to it. So let's go ahead and delete anything that might be in here already. It's got to be on the default. And let's leave the 80, which is fine. Let's go ahead and click Add and HTTPS. Choose our data certificate and put in data.widget.internal, which is the name of our Active Directory domain. Now, in your case, if it's going to be a public domain, it may be a .com or a .net or something similar. Let's go ahead and choose OK and close. And now what we want to do is we want to stop the website. So that way, work folders can use it. So that part is all done. Let's go ahead and click Close. And let's go to our Microsoft Management Console. So you go to the Run command and choose MMC. And we're going to click on File and Add Remove Snap-in and choose Certificates. Let's choose the computer account, click Next, choose the local computer, and finish. Let's expand our certificates and go to the Trusted Root certif Certification Authorities, and then expand that and go to Certificates. And from here, we see our data certificate that we created earlier. Now we're going to right-click on the certificate, choose All Tasks, and choose Export. So we need to make this available for the other computers to access it. Click Next, and we're going to choose Yes. We need to export the private key, otherwise it won't work right. And we're going to stick with the defaults that you see here. And then we're going to put in a password. And the password is going to be something make sure that you remember. And go ahead and click Next. And now we'll choose the location for the file. So I'm going to put this in the domain controller just so everyone can easily get to this and then go to the net logon folder and I'm going to call it data which is the name of our server and we'll click save and next and finish. All right now through group policy you can do one of two things you can either add the certificate to the trusted root certification of all workstations and or you can go in and say where the work folder share is. Now, if you choose not to do that through group policy, you can go ahead and do that by simply importing the certificate and setting up the work folders manually, which I'm going to show you how to do now. Let's switch over to our workstation. We are in our Windows 10 workstation, and we're going to want to go to the control panel. So go ahead and click the start button, click control panel, and from here, we're going to click on Work Folders. And now we're going to set up Work Folders. So don't choose the email address option. Choose the Enter a URL instead. And now we'll put in our HTTPS data.widget.internal. Now, if you see an error after that, Take a look and see what it says. And according to this, it says the certificate issued by an authority that was not trusted. Oh, well, we need to go in and add the trust. So let's do the same thing we did last time and go to a run command and choose MMC. And we'll go and once again add the snap in, add certificates, choose the computer account, click next, stay with the local computer and click Finish. Now we'll click OK. And we'll go to our Trusted Root certi Certification Authorities and Certificates. Now we want to right click. We want to import that certificate that we put in that net logon folder. So we'll go to the Browse. And again, I put it in the net logon folder. You may put it in another location. And I'll choose All Files, because it can't find the one we want, and choose Data. That is the certificate. Go ahead and click Next. Put in that fancy password we did earlier. 
and click next and stay stay with the trusted root certification authorities next and finish and so now our certificate is in the trusted area let's go ahead and close that and now we're back to our work folders URL all right so now it says we are introducing work folders we are good to go we like our path that's there let's go ahead and choose next and accept the policies set up work folders and our next screen should show us that we're synchronizing beautiful okay so there's our work folders all set up here is the synchronization information we can put up to 56 gigabytes apparently on this so let's take a look and we see work folders in our Windows Explorer. Let's go ahead and close that and open that up again just so you can see how I got there. On the left hand side you see this PC and right above this PC it says work folders. And there we are. So if we put a new folder in here, text document, and we open it up on another computer, then that same work folder will be synchronized to the other computer. So that is setting up work folders on Windows Server 2016. And again, if you're doing this on 2012, 2012 R2, the procedure is basically exactly the same. So you shouldn't have any variance. They haven't made any changes to it in 2016 uh, that wasn't already there in 2012.